ventilation requirements. First, we're going to look at the uh, number of reservoirs that might be required. A large building will normally have a, a number of separate smoke reservoirs within it, and one objective of any smoke control system is to ensure that smoke from a fire only affects a single reservoir. This is so that damage is limited in extent, so that people are put to minimal risk, and also so that the smoke exhaust system functions correctly. We're going to examine how many reservoirs might be required in a building, but first we'll have a look at some of the principles behind smoke reservoirs. Smoke collects in a reservoir and is exhausted from it either by natural ventilators or by mechanical fans. Replacement air is drawn in from other parts of the building. Sometimes providing vents for replacement air is problematic. So where possible, the roof ventilators in reservoirs unaffected by the fire are used as a cost-effective and practical way of providing the replacement air. Sometimes, depending upon the design of the building, low-level vents have to be provided instead of, or as well as, the roof vents in unaffected reservoirs. The easiest option is to use the roof vents that are in reservoirs other than the one that is affected by smoke. It should be noted that no smoke layer has a perfectly defined interface with the colder, clearer air below it. and There is always some small amount of cross-mixing. Uh, this cross-mixing of air underneath the smoke layer has no significant effect upon the rate of smoke entering the smoke layer, but can, under certain circumstances, cause progressive loss of visibility in the air beneath the smoke layer. This loss of visibility occurs more rapidly when the hot smoke and the air beneath have a high relative velocity, or when a ceiling layer is cool, indeed very cool gases will not persist as a layer, or when turbulence disturbs the interface between the smoker layer and the clear layer beneath it. Heat loss is due to radiation downwards and conduction to the structure will be experienced, and so to prevent excessive heat loss, it's necessary to limit the size of reservoirs. Where the fire is directly below the smoke reservoir, that is, uh, in an undivided building, such as a warehouse or a factory, the maximum area of any one reservoir should be 2,000 square metres if natural smoke exhaust ventilators are fitted, or 2,600 square metres if powered smoke exhaust fans are fitted. If the smoke control system is for property protection only, it's acceptable to increase reservoir sizes to 3,000 square metres where mechanical extraction is installed. Where the fire is in a room adjacent to the space containing the reservoir, or is beneath a mezzanine in the same space, for example in a single or multi-storey shopping mall, uh, the maximum area of the fire room that's allowed to cause smoky gases to flow into the smoke reservoir should be 1,000 square metres if smoke, uh, natural smoke exhaust ventilators are fitted, or 1,300 square metres if powered smoke exhaust fans are fitted. The maximum area of the space into which the smoke spills, which is normally the mall or atrium, should be 1,000 square metres if natural smoke exhaust ventilators are fitted, or 1,300 square metres if powered smoke exhaust fans are fitted. As previously stated, these limitations are imposed so as to limit heat losses from the smoke layer and to maintain the buoyancy of the smoke within the layer. Another reservoir dimension that must not be exceeded is that the maximum linear dimension of the reservoir cannot exceed 60 metres in any direction. This limits heat losses, but it also ensures that no one should have to travel more than 30 metres below a smoke layer to escape. Now we'll look at how the reservoirs are created. In shopping malls, they can be formed from the downstand faciers of the shops combined with smoke curtains placed along the mall, or by raised roof lights, or by structural members of the building. In warehouses and factories, they're often formed by smoke curtains either permanently in place or temporarily brought into place on actuation of the fire alarm system. Shopfront faces are often installed to stop smoke entering the shop from the mall. But sometimes they can be installed to stop smoke from a fire in the shop entering the mall. For example, if the shop unit is larger than 1,000 square metres in area. Even with smoke reservoir area limitations, there will still be heat losses from the smoke in the reservoir and these can cause stagnant smoke to cool and to start to drop. To prevent this, the exhaust outlets, whether natural or mechanical, should be distributed over the reservoir so as to prevent stagnant regions being formed. There is a general rule of thumb that natural ventilators should be no more than 20 metres apart and no more than 10 metres from the reservoir edges. These distances are measured in two planes and diagonal distances are disregarded. If these distances are exceeded, then it may be necessary to demonstrate, for example with CFD modelling, 
that the ventilation system works and will not lead to a stagnation of smoke and to smoke logging. We'll return to this issue later, but first it's um, it is recommended in this step to initially determine the minimum number of reservoirs required in the scheme. There may be circumstances where there is only one reservoir and others where there are a large number of reservoirs. Let's do some examples of determining the minimum number of reservoirs required. Example one, um, determine the minimum number of reservoirs in a warehouse building 200 metres by 100 metres that's been fitted with natural ventilators for life safety. Well, firstly, we know that the maximum size limit is 2,000 square metres, and our building is 200 metres by 100 metres, which equals 20,000 square metres. So in this case, we can see immediately that we need a minimum of 20,000 divided by 2,000, which equals 10 reservoirs. But we need to ensure that 10 reservoirs can cover the whole building in practice, and we need to check that no reservoir dimension exceeds 60 metres, excluding diagonals, which are allowed. So these final checks are carried out simply by uh, looking at a sketch or, or plan of the building and ensuring that the uh, limitations are adhered to. Example two asks us to determine the minimum number of reservoirs for a factory building 130 metres by 90 metres that is being fitted with natural ventilators for life safety. Well, firstly, we know that the maximum size is 2,000 square metres and our building is 130 by 90 which equals 11,700 square metres. So in this case, we need a minimum of six reservoirs as five times 2,000 equals 10,000, which is less than the figure of 11,700 that we have, and six times 2,000 equals 12,000 square metres. And this is greater than our figure of 11,700. So we must have at least six reservoirs in this building. We need to check that no dimension exceeds 60 metres, and so we do this with the aid of a sketch as shown here. Example three, determine the minimum number of reservoirs for a large out of town retail shop building, 130 meters by 30 meters, that's been fitted with mechanical fans for life safety purposes. Firstly, we need to know that the maximum size is 2,600 square meters, and our building is 130 by 30, which equals 3,900 square meters. So in this case, we need a minimum of two reservoirs, as two times 2,600 is 5,200 uh, 5, square metres, and this is greater than the area of our building. So two reservoirs will be fine. We still need to check that no dimension exceeds 60 metres, as this limitation is as applicable to mechanical extract systems as it is to natural systems. In this case, it can be seen from the diagram that one dimension is bound to exceed 60 metres, and therefore, in this building, we shall need three reservoirs.